raise your drinks up casually. Raise your drinks, raise your drinks up, raise your drinks up casually. It's the Black Bourbon Family. Hey everyone, I'm Jason. And I'm Brandy. And we're the Black, Black Bourbon, Bourbon Family. Family. Today, we're going to talk about bourbons that didn't meet the test for us this year. A little disappointing. We're going to explain why they were disappointing. And as we're going through this video, a couple of questions, a couple of things rather. Number one, tell us which bourbon disappointed you this year. Put it in the comments section. Number two, give us a thumbs up. I want to crack this YouTube algorithm. I am fed up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Let's try and think of a good word to say. Yes. And I want to see if we can get this video out to a lot more people. And then number three, if you could subscribe to the channel, that would be greatly appreciated. And if you want to support the channel, consider joining us on Patreon. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell you about four. So the list is short. Bourbons that didn't quite make it, you know, they disappointed us, you know, in some sort of way. And just to let you all know, we're similar to you. We watch reviews as well to say, hey, I wonder if we should check that out. Never heard of it, but, you know, Mash and Drum said it's good. Whiskey Mountain said it's good. Bourbon Judge said it's good. Whoever, right, mm -hmm. said it's a good bourbon, we'll check it out. And even if they say it, they didn't quite care for it, we still might check it out. So, hopefully we can help you with what we have here. So, you know, next time you see it in a story, be like, oh, I remember Brandy and Jason saying, eh, I don't get that one. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till a friend buys it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brandy, so kick us off. Okay, so the first one mm -hmm. is Laws. Four grain straight bourbon. <laughs> so, yeah, we bought this while we were in Colorado this summer. And we went to the bar, we had some, we had other bourbon. So maybe, you know, mm -hmm. we thought it was good. So mm -hmm. it's like, oh, we're going to take us a, a bottle home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you when you first you know put it up to your nose, it's like, oh, what is that? <laughs> so I don't know if it's the wheat, the barley, or the combination of the two um, that just is not mixing well, or it just I don't know. It, it just was not a, a pleasant smell. <laughs> um, and then when you you know taste it, mm -hmm. you, I'm also getting that same you know strong wheat, strong barley. And then it's just, yeah, it, I, I don't know what we were tasting while we were in the bars, in the bars. Yeah. Maybe it was the elevation. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but it's a no for me. Yeah. <laughs> so enough said. I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. And as you can see, I mean, like I said, we went this summer and it's still <clears throat> yeah. a lot there. So, yep, I agree. All right, so my first one is Blue Run 14 Year. Fancy, nice bottle with the butterfly on it. 14 year bourbon. Um, the master distiller is, uh, his, the name slipping my mind, the guy who used to be at Fort Roses, he used to be a master distiller there, Rutledge, Jim Rutledge. So I'm just expecting this to be phenomenal, right? Uh, between $150 to $175. Mm. And that's where it got me. <laughs> <laughs> when you pay that much money, you're expecting some old Carter-like, some Fourgate type, some A. Smith Bowman cash string type, right? I mean, you're expecting something that is like... <laughs> phenomenal exactly 
different levels of flavor, you know, just the palate is going crazy. And with this one, it is a good bourbon, but it's one dimensional, not a lot of complexity to it, just good at this level and it just stays there. And that would be good if it wasn't $150. It's a $60 bottle. <laughs> Right, right? <laughs> yeah. It wouldn't be too bad, right? But when you you pay that much money, you want something that's good and that you feel like, ooh, should I taste this? I know it's real good. I can just keep drinking it, but I know I paid a lot of money for it, you know? Right. So bourbon is good, but when it comes to the price, not so much. Blue Run 14 year uh, brandy. Yeah, so disappointing. Uh, just like this one. <laughs> <laughs> Will it pot still reserve? Mm -hmm. Again, a lot of people are drawn to the fancy bottle. Mm -hmm. And um, that's kind of where it stops for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we pass this bottle quite often, quite mm -hmm. frequently, mm -hmm. and um, no one picks it up. Right. Uh, it's just, um, it's, it's dry. Mm -hmm. It lacks sweetness. Um, it lacks spice. Everything that you kind of want in a bourbon, <laughs> it doesn't have it. Yeah. At least for me. Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, so that's why it it fell on my you know list of disappointing yeah bourbons. And it's a fifty. Some places are trying to sell it for sixty dollars or so because of the bottle. You know, people see that bottle and they're like, "Oh, what is that? I gotta have it." Kind of like the horsey bottle, Mr. Blanton's. Yeah. You know. Well, we all know how I feel about Blanton's. That's disappointing for Brandy <laughs> and me. <laughs> all right, y'all. So. Bear with me on this one. Again, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Now, just just hear me out. Hear me out. Yeah, I, I want to hear him too. Oh. <laughs> Barstown Discovery Series number five. Number five, you all. Okay, let's start real quick, real quick. You start at number three, and that is just some... Um, phenomenal great bourbon that you I wish I had three backups for mm. number four is right behind number three great bourbon I mean just complex all this all that and then you get to number five <laughs> where they introduce the dickle juice as some would say <laughs> <Dickle juice>. <laughs> <laughs> 17 year old dickle they put in there mm -hmm. and it just didn't meet my standards for Barstown uh, Discovery. So we stayed in there and we tried number six and we love number six. I mean certain people in this house really love number six. <clears throat> the only two of us that drink and it's not me. So anyway but, I was discovering. Uh huh. You was discovering number six. Number six yeah, <laughs> I'm glad I discovered a backup bottle. <laughs> um, but this one, it's good. But when you start to expect certain things from a bourbon, this just didn't meet it. Mm -hmm. A little lower proof. It's 105, I think it is, versus the 110, 115 that the other ones were. And I don't know. I don't know. It's not that it's bad. And then it's $130, right? So again, you go to that price point, you want something that's very good. And when you get in that price range, especially not only is it not meeting the expectations from the previous uh, batches or whatever, then you get into the price and you're like, okay, they gotta step it back up. And they did for number six. So not gonna stay too long on it, but Yes, Barstown Discovery Series number five. We will drink it, but we will uh, 
Not drinking as much as the other ones. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right, you all. Again, we want you to tell us what bourbon disappointed you this year. Bourbon, bourbons, and tell us why, too. We want to hear the same reasons like we provided you all. It could be whatever you feel like it, dis it disappointed you with. All right, well. You know what else disappoints me, Brandy? What's that? <clears throat> what we were just watching, the Chicago Bears, and that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> so this is a perfect time to do this video. The Bears <laughs> disappointing me Monday Night Football and these bourbons for whatever reason. Sorry, y'all. I just had to get that out there. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Thumbs up. <laughs> At some point. <laughs> you just got to... Well, never mind. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> We're not going to go there. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel. Uh, thumbs up. Cheers. <laughs>